President Biden addressed multiple issues in a sit-down interview with CNN yesterday, including the upcoming midterm elections, Ukraine, and OPEC Plus's decision to cut oil production. So Christina Ruffini is outside of the White House with more on this. Christina, thanks for joining us. Let us dig into this. So President Biden vowed yesterday to impose consequences after OPEC Plus announced that it was going to cut daily production quotas. Uh, the consequences would be against a prominent OPEC Plus member, Saudi Arabia. Let's play some of the sound. Do you think it's time for the U.S. to rethink its relationship with Saudi Arabia? Yes, I am uh, in the process when the, when the uh, uh, this House and Senate gets back, they're, they're going to have to, uh, there's going to be some consequences for what they've done with Russia. What kind of consequences? Menendez says suspend all arms sales. Is that something you'd consider? I'm not going to get into what I'd consider and what I have in mind, but there will be, there will be consequences. So he said with Russia. And so just to explain to people, um, you know, what, the reason that OPEC plus diminish the oil production is because it keeps the price of oil high. Well, who benefits from that? Countries that sell oil, including Russia. And so that's why the president had been sort of pressuring OPEC plus not to do this. But my question to you is what sort of sanctions or repercussions could there be? It's a complicated relationship with Saudi Arabia. It is a really complicated relationship, and it's been complicated for every administration, no matter which way they try to play it. The last administration was a little more openly supportive of Saudi Arabia. They, they renegotiated these arms deals, one of which Congress even said no, and then they used this emergency power to push through the arms deal. And that was, you know, in, in lip service of having Saudi Arabia help defend itself against Iran, which which is a real concern and is a strategic relationship the U.S. has. The U.S. also has forces there. We sent more forces there overseas. I'm sorry, over the last administration. There's currently about 3,000 Americans stationed there. So there is this military aspect. You know, there's the war in Yemen. There are reasons the U.S. wants to have a strategic relationship with Saudi Arabia. However, at some point, successive administrations have found themselves asking, what is the benefit of that relationship if they're not really here for us when we need them? And this was an example of when the West really needed OPEC to get on its side, right? They really needed OPEC to cooperate. Europe and the U.S. were trying to get these countries, who they say are strategic allies, to come around to negotiate pricing that benefited Europe and punished Russia for its action in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And they've done the exact opposite. So you saw a pretty unequivocal yes Mr. Biden said he is re, you know, rethinking the relationship with Saudi. He does want to re-examine it, and he does want to look at consequences. Now, will they go so far as to sanction Saudi Arabia? I don't know, but you could see the U.S. try to cut back on some of these arms sales. You could see them reevaluate, you know, the military assets and forces that we have in the region. All these things could be on the table because, as we've said, it's, it's it, the, the ongoing thought has always been the enemy of my enemy is my friend, mm -hmm. and now I think they're not even sure if that is holding true. And, you know, speaking of that, uh, Saudi Arabia and the U.S. have been allies against Iran, and it's pushed to develop nuclear weapons. But could we see a shift here ever so slightly? I mean, Iran is an oil producer as well. That's why this is such a tough balancing act for these administrations, for the secretaries of state, for anybody who's dealing with this, because it's never just one puzzle piece, right? So even if you think, okay, we've given Saudi enough weapons, they should be able to defend themselves against Iran, if you antagonize them and if you break that relationship, you're then not going to have their leverage to help you if you're doing something like trying to get Iran back into this nuclear negotiation. Mm -hmm. Now, you could argue one way or the other whether or not the Saudis have really been that influential, but they are there and they are on the side of wanting Iran not to have a nuclear weapon. So you need all the people you can get saying that, you know, around you're in your club and when you go to Iran and say, look at all these people who don't want you to have this. It also helps you present options and offers to Iran in those negotiations if you have other partners who are on that side. So again, it's going to be more complicated, and those are all things that the Biden administration says it has to weigh, which is why they're going to examine the relationship and they're not ruling anything out or in at this time. Well, Christina, it is so complex, and you do, you do such a good job at explaining it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great morning.